Having proven that butan 1-ol and butan 2-ol react with acidified potassium dichromate, it is possible to distinguish the two by a further test. In order to uh, do the second test, you need to distill the products that are formed as a result of the reaction between the acidified potassium dichromate and the butan 1-ol and the butan 2-ol. Both methods are the same, and although you should use simple distillation to do this, uh, a simpler laboratory distillation, which doesn't involve a Liebig condenser, uh, is suitable for this method. So, in order to distill over the products as they are formed, we will take some of the butan 1-ol, as we did before, and react that with the acidified potassium dichromate once again. Ideally, this will be done in a water bath once again, but to effectively show the distillation, we will simply heat. However, when we heat, there is a danger that the vapors which involve the alcohol could be flammable, so you need to be careful when to heat very slowly. Also, it's very important to appreciate that as the liquids boil, there would be a, um, a, a violent um, bumping of the liquids as it boiled, and you would get um, perhaps some of the orange dichromate coming across in the distillate. To help avoid this, it is always uh, worth adding some anti-bumping granules, um, just a few which act as a nucleus for the boiling and promote smooth boiling. These do not Im are not involved in any way in the reaction. Okay, so all that we need to do is to heat the combination and bring over the products. Now, in the case of butan 1 ol, the product is going to be butan al. This distills over because it has a lower boiling point than the butan 1 ol, and also a lower boiling point than the potential product of butanoic acid. So, careful heating will enable us to bring the, the product across. So once again, the orange dichromate will turn to green as this is warmed, and the butan 1-ol will be oxidized, first of all, to butan al. And because butan al has a relatively low boiling point, it will form a gas. That gas will pass um, across through the delivery tube, and we should be able to collect the distillate on the other side. This process takes um, much longer if you use a hot water bath, um, but is um, somewhat safer. Once again, the orange colour is going green, and you can already see that the vapour is starting to condense at the top of the tube. So if we, as we heat, you can see that there is some liquid starting to condense and falling back into the boiling tube. However, if I continue to heat, some of the gas will find its way into the delivery tube and will run down and we will start to get a distillate. So this distillation is only done for the butan 1-ol and the butan 2-ol. The 2-methylpropan-2-ol that we tested in the last video didn't give a reaction with acidified dichromate, and so there is no reason to um, bring across any product from um, that reaction, or that no reaction. Okay, so as we, as we heat, you can see that there is rapid vaporization, and you can see that it's boiling quite vigorously, but the boiling isn't too violent, and hopefully none of the green chromium-3 ions, or indeed the original 
potassium diachromate will come across as we do this. Okay, so if we start to just increase a little bit, we should start to slide this over. Very clear that the orange color has gone green and we are now just starting to get our first little bit of distillate coming through. And some of it would be still as vapor the method of condensation is not as good as a light bit condenser, but still there is plenty of distillate coming across, as I hope you can see. What I will do in the next video is that I will take this distillate and I will also distill the butan 2 ol combination with the acidified dichromate. And I will take that distillate <clears throat> and we will do some further tests on those in the next video. As you can see, quite a bit of the distillate is coming across. I will continue with that until we have produced um, a reasonable quantity of distillate from both of those.